Have you ever traveled in a car? Well, I'm sure you must have. Or maybe the train or the aeroplane. All these vehicles, modes of transportation, are tested for safety. So that when they are driven, if by mistake it, any accident happens, you know, it should be safe for the passengers, right? But they are not that stringent because it doesn't impact the biology of the person. It impacts the physics of the person. But when it comes to biology, we have to be super careful because Suppose we take a medicine and goes inside our body, what it does, what it will do today, what, it, what will be the long-term effect, what it will do to a different type of population, all that we need to know. Because without that, that drug can be poison for the population, right? So we cannot give poison to our population. So as governments of the world, they have a very important duty and that is where regulatory framework comes into picture. So we have Food and Drug Administration, FDA in USA. In India, you have Drug Control General of India. So all these regulatory bodies have different specification for drug development and the process through which the drug gets into the market. For example, you must have uh, consumed a paracetamol or any antibiotic. So all these has passed through clinical trials because without that, our drug cannot go to the market. Now, as we all know that we all are different, right? So ethnicity wise, uh, uh, gene wise, we all are different, right? So people in Asia are different genetically than people in West or uh, people in the East. So that is where clinical research is very important. So if clinical research doesn't exist, probably a lot of drugs will never reach the market, right? And even if they reach, they might be a wrong drug, which might cause a lot of damages to the people It might physically impair them or maybe uh, death can happen. So that is why clinical research is there in our world. Now, this industry is going to boom because more drugs are going to come into the market, right? So as a life science professional, you should know that if you make a career in clinical research market, then what are the jobs you can get as a beginner, as a fresher and how you should progress in this direction. So like I said earlier, why clinical research is going to boom is because using AI, now more drugs will be coming into the approval pipeline. More companies will approach clinical research companies to test their drugs which are generated through AI, right? So now that means more drugs are going to come into the market for clinical research and that means the demand for clinical research profession is going to go up. So today in this video, we are going to understand as a MSc Biotechnology or Life Science or PSC Bi uh, Biology or Life Science, what all jobs you can get into the clinical research market. Now starting with, if you want to make a career in clinical research, first thing you should know is you don't need a degree per se for clinical research you need training for clinical research because again it's not that vast that you have to have a degree but yeah even if you have a training for these you're good to go and in fact you should know that various companies have dedicated training departments also to train you so even if you are untrained and you know, if they hire you they will still train you so nothing to worry but let us understand what kind of jobs you can get in the clinical research industry so the first one will be clinical research associate i'm sure you must have heard of it we call it as cras so cras will monitor the clinical trials to ensure compliance with regulatory requirements, protocols, and good clinical practices. So now you already know that uh, we have FDA and uh, DCGI and all these regulatory bodies and they want the clinical trial to happen in a particular way. So clinical research associate is that official who will make sure that it is being followed throughout the process and for this you need to have excellent communication skills attention to detail regulatory knowledge and data management skills and initially you will uh, enter as a junior cra and later on you will uh, progress to the senior cra and for further on you'll become a clinical project manager so that's the first role you can get as a beginner in the life science industry in the clinical research industry now followed by that um, you should know that uh, the next step or next type of job you can get is clinical trials coordinator so this is a little higher up job and here now as a clinical trials coordinator 
you're going to support various other CRAs in managing clinical trial sites, handling documentation, coordination, scheduling, and interacting with the trial participants or patients. So what happens basically is clinical research associate will be in a particular hospital, but the clinical trial coordinator will be coordinating between multiple hospitals, right? So that is what he will be doing. Now, what do you need here? You need good organization skill, project management skill, communication skill, multitasking skill because you are handling multiple multiple hospitals and this goes on to become a clinical project manager again so yeah you start the CRA you can also become a clinical trial coordinator and further on you become a clinical project manager now the third one is the most interesting one and that is called as clinical data manager like I told you clinical research is all about protocols right a particular protocols has to be followed now, when the protocol is followed, data is generated at every step of clinical research. Now, the clinical data manager will be responsible for collecting, managing, and analyzing clinical trial data to ensure accuracy and integrity. Because see, FDA is not going to come at every step and check whether you are following the protocol. They will just look at the data and by looking at the integrity of data, they can make out if the clinical research was done properly or not. So that is where CDM, clinical data manager comes into picture. And you need to have data analysis skills. You need to have data management skills, database management skills, and attention to detail. Now, uh, initially you will join as a clinical data manager after training and as you gain experience you become a senior data manager and further on you become a data analytics specialist and it can go up to a level where you become a uh, data inspector under the FDA and DJCI also so that is where you can get to now one of the highest paid jobs in clinical research is actually clinical data manager so if you want to become a clinical data manager Biotechnica is starting a clinical data management training program details are given in the description you can check it out and in this particular program we have a clinical data management manager with 10 years of experience uh, he's from Eli Lilly his name is Mr. Rishi Raj he's going to come and train you guys on clinical data management further to that of course we'll be providing you placement assistance also uh, you'll be getting placed in top companies such as Paraxel, Accenture, Equivia and various other clinical data management companies. Now for, further on what other type of jobs you can get in clinical research industry would be the fifth type will be regulatory affairs specialist. Now regulatory affairs specialist ensures the clinical trials are in compliance with the regulation. They prepare the uh, documentation for regulatory submissions and they lies with the regulatory authority. So when the FDA will come, they have to be talking. Right? So again, this is a very highly uh, specialized job. You will require a lot of ICMP and ICH regulatory knowledge, documentation and analytical skills. And generally you'll start as a junior regulatory affairs specialist. Further on, you'll become a senior regulatory specialist and then regulatory affairs manager. And so this is how the, this uh, promotion goes on. Now, followed with that, like I said earlier, clinical project manager. Now, when you join as a clinical research associate, further on, you get promoted to clinical project manager after years of experience. Let's say five to ten years of experience. So that person who becomes a clinical project manager will be overseeing the entire clinical trial process. He'll be managing the budgets, timelines and resources and allocating the manpower at the right clinical research sites. Now he will also be responsible to manage the entire clinical research for that particular city probably. So you need to have leadership skills, you need to have project management skills, you need to have risk analyzing and assessment skills and you need to have problem solving skills because this is all on job things. This cannot be taught. This happens over a period of years you learn all of this right and you initially join as a clinical project manager then it moves on to senior project manager and further on to director of clinical operations. Now, now remember, this particular job starts at the CRA level, which is a clinical research associate level. Over a period of 20 years, you will become a clinical director of clinical operations in that company. Now, followed by that, you have clinical research scientists. Now, what do they do? Of course, they will conduct the clinical trial. They will be the guys who will design the clinical trial conduct the clinical trial and then interpret the results and develop the protocols for, for that particular trial. So for every clinical research company, there will be clients, pharmaceutical company. So they will be different. They will Their requirements will be different. According to that, these scientists, clinical research scientists will be designing and conducting the clinical trials. Now, what do you need here? You need research design data analysis, critical thinking, scientific knowledge and understanding of the patient is very, very important. 
important. Now, initially you join as a junior clinical research scientist, further on you become a senior uh, scientist, and then it, as you uh, progress and gain up to 25 years experience, you can become a clinical director in these startups, such as Equivia, Paraxel, and other companies. Now, followed by that, the seventh type of job which you can get in the clinical research industry is called as a pharmacovigilance specialist. Now, pharmacovigilance specialist is somebody who will monitor and report the adverse drug reactions during clinical trials. Now, drug safety knowledge, regulatory affairs knowledge, report writing, all of the all these skills you need. You need to have the knowledge of pharmacokinetics of the drugs. You need to learn all of this because this cannot be taught in one day in any one degree. So you have to learn all of this on the job. So initially you will join the junior pharmacovigilance specialist and it will move on to the senior pharmacovigilance officer and then finally you will become a drug safety manager. You can also get a job in the government as a drug safety officer also under DCGI and MDA if you become a pharmacovigilance specialist. We are also going to come up with a pharmacovigilance training program. Stay tuned for more details. Stay subscribed to Biotechnica. The next step will be the eighth one where you become a medical writer. Now, what does a medical writer do? Medical writer is not medical coding. Let me be very, very clear. A medical writer prepares the clinical study reports, regulatory documents and scientific publications. He will write the research report. He should have the attention to detail and have appropriate scientific knowledge of the drugs in question. Now, what exactly you will become in future? So you start as a junior medical writer. As the day progresses, you become a senior medical writer. Then you you become a scientific communications manager in the company. Now, the ninth type of job you can get in a clinical research industry is called as a biostatistician. I'm sure you must have heard of biostats. You must have studied also. So, biostatistician applies statistical techniques to design clinical trials, analyze data, and interpret the results. Now, you need to have excellent statistical analysis skills, SAS and R programming, data interpretation skills, and you should gain experience before you get in this job because it's a very responsible job. So, you join as a junior biostatistician, then you become a senior biostatistician, and followed by that, you become the head of biostatistics as you gain experience. So, that's about the ninth type of job you can get under the clinical research industry. Now, the tenth one is called as quality assurance specialist. Now, now, a quality assurance specialist or a QA specialist will ensure that the clinical trials meet the quality standards and comply with the regulatory guidelines. They will be looking at the quality control. They will be uh, managing the regulatory compliance so they should know all the laws of the FDA. They should have the attention to detail that everything is being followed. Otherwise, the drug can get rejected because of non-following of the protocol and that can lead to a huge loss to the clinical research company. That is where QA assurance, quality assurance specialist is required. And you initially become a QA assurance specialist, then you become a QA manager and finally you become a director of quality assurance in the clinical research industry. Well, in today's video, today we talked about a different type of a job you can get into the biotech and pharma industry and that is not exactly a research job, but it's an operations job, right? And now, operations job is suitable for someone who can do repetitive job, who is good at repetition, who is good at following protocols, who is good at analyzing and interpreting laws, who is good at analyzing and interpreting data, right? So if you are someone like that, then comment in the section below that what kind of job you would like to work in clinical research industry and we will definitely come up with a detailed video on that, right? So today we covered about the top 10 types of clinical research jobs you can get. Now out of these two, we are going to have the clinical data management training program, pharmacovigilance is going to come very, very soon. So, and we do have a tie-up with Clini India where you can take training for clinical research also. So you can go there also and check it out. So all these details are given in the description. Please check it out and Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comment section if you have any, any further questions. I'll definitely address that. Thank you. Take care. Keep shining. Bye-bye.